So our second theme on this course has been uh, sustainable development and sustainability. And in this third part, uh, I will then uh, uh, discuss uh, the sustainable development goals, SDGs, uh, set by the United uh, Nations. So this is something uh, relatively recent uh, innovation. So it was on uh, September 2015 that uh, that uh, 193 countries of the United Nations General Assembly agreed on the so-called 2030 development agenda. And, uh, and uh, this uh, implied a global agreement on the 17 sustainable development goals, SDGs. And uh, there was also very broad support from the non-governmental organizations or N NGOs on this, uh, this uh, so it's quite impressive uh, uh, that, that such kind of global agreement on, on uh, 17 specific sustainable development goals could be, could be made in the, in the United Na Nations. I, I suspect that if today this kind of, kind of uh, discussion was going on, maybe it would be more difficult in the current political climate to achieve such kind of, kind of agreement. But in 2015, this was this was achieved and it was quite uh, impressive. So what are these uh, 17 SDGs more specifically? So I have it on, on, on this specific uh, slide illustrating. So if we now keep in mind these uh, three pillars of sustainability, which were the, the social, economic and environmental sustainability, then we can think of the first row. So, so these goals from from one to six uh, are are uh, can be thought of as this kind of um, goals towards uh, social sustainability. So these goals include uh, no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, uh, wa clean water and sanitation. So in some sense, of course, the the water, clean water, is also also related to the uh, clean environment. But uh, but here particularly, of course, we this uh, this goal is more stated from the perspective of this uh, human society is that there's clean water supply to the to the human society. Then, if we think of the middle row, so these uh, these goals from seven to twelve. Uh, then these are more related to the economic sustainability. So there is, uh, there is uh, such goals as uh, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth, uh, industry innovation and infrastructure, reduced inequalities and referring particularly to economic inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, and uh, responsible consumption and production. So uh, quite clearly these seven to 12 are, are economic goals. And then there are three clearly environmental goals. Uh, there is 13 is climate action, 14 is life below water, and 15 is life on land. So these, these are the, the three environmental goals. It might, might look like, uh, like there is uh, less weight on the, on the environment than the other two, two uh, pillars of sustainability. But of course, uh, these, uh, it's not really just, uh, just about the, the um, uh, counting the number of, of goals. And uh, and uh, there is also 16 and 70s uh, include peace, justice, and strong institutions, and partnerships uh, for the for the goals. So as I mentioned before, that, that that it's amazing that in 2015 these kind of goals could be could be globally agreed upon because in this current uh, current uh, um, political atmosphere. Uh, it it uh, it seems uh, more difficult to to agree on this kind of kind of um, uh, kind of goals. So I mentioned that that there's only three that are really clearly 
uh, three three goals that are clearly related to the um, environmental sustainability. Of course, it can be also that there exists some kind of uh, under these other other goals. There there is environment related uh, uh, related um, targets and indicators. So coming back to this slide, uh, I want to emphasize that these uh, seventeen goals. They, they are further broken down to targets and there exist uh, 169 targets that are, are allocated uh, under these 70s broader, 70 broader goals. And this uh, uh, progress towards these 169 targets is further monitored using a, a set of 232 indicators. So, so in that sense, this kind of uh, weight of, for example, environmental goals uh, uh, does not only only or, or does not imply that there is less weight on the environmental sustainability, because many of the targets and indicators also are related to the to the to the environment. So one important uh, part of this, of course, uh, in in my mind at least, is that uh, that there is also like like then very very um, there exist this kind of operational indicators and quantitative measurements of of the progress towards these targets and goals. Uh, so there exists this kind of database that uh, that uh, does uh, systematically monitor. Uh, how these sustainable goals, or in some sense, it, it's more like monitoring that 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 are we making progress towards the goals, or are we may be deteriorating over time? Um, so there exists quite a comprehensive database. If you want to do, for example, some kind of uh, quantitative uh, studies based on these SDGs, and indeed. Uh, in many many empirical works that I have seen, these SDGs are actually used also in in academic research as data. Uh, however, it's also good to mention that uh, that uh, there are also a lot of limitations with this data. So so uh, some of the indicators are, for example, uh, duplicated in many many of the of the targets. And then also there are lots of missing values. So not every country is systematically reporting their, their, all of the indicators. So in some sense, the, the data looks like a, like a Swiss cheese with a lot of holes. But anyway, it is very admirable that this kind of uh, global agreement on the goals has been, has been reached and, uh, and there exists uh, some quantitative data to monitor also progress towards these indicators. So this is quite a, quite a positive development in, in this kind of sustainability related uh, research, I think, because in the past, uh, uh, a lot of, um, a lot of work on on sustainability was only only this kind of conceptual discussions and and uh, and definitions. So now, since two thousand fifteen, there has been great progress also towards uh, measurement and monitoring and uh, more quantitative uh, analysis. So that is that is quite uh, quite promising, I think. And I also want to highlight the fact that also these SDGs. Uh, uh, also, they have started to influence the, the policy in practice. So, for example, here in Finland, uh, uh, already in 2017, the Finnish government announced uh, uh, an official action plan called Agenda 2030 uh, of, of how the government uh, aims to meet these, uh, these uh, 17 uh, SDGs. And uh, as a part of this uh, agenda 2030, also Finland announced that uh, that it aims to be the, become the first uh, first country to reach carbon neutrality by by year 2035. So this is of course very very ambitious uh, objective. Uh, one thing that helps here in Finland is that uh, that uh, that uh, more than seventy percent of the land area of Finland is is. Uh, Covered by forests, and and forests can can uh, serve as as carbon sinks. So so in some sense, this this kind of uh, carbon neutrality is not necessarily achievable by many other other countries. But perhaps in in Finland, it might be might be possible. Although recently there is some concern that uh, that are these carbon sinks actually uh, 
uh, growing fast enough uh, to to reach this objective. And uh, but the main point here is that indeed these SDGs have started to make also also influence on on, on policy making at the at the national levels, and uh, also then when Finland gives uh, gives support to other countries, especially developing countries, then uh, then these uh, SDGs are also used as a criterion that, that what kind of purposes, some kind of international support can be can be given. So in that that respect, these SDGs are are uh, very policy relevant. And also, if you if you think about, uh, for example, uh, university courses and studies, then then um, uh, you might have noticed these kind of icons of these different SDGs. And that that uh, that uh, at the university we need to need to indicate that uh, that uh, to which specific uh, SDGs our our content of our our courses uh, uh, might contribute to. So, so that this is also how this uh, how these SDGs are are being made uh, made more visible. So this completes the the second part on on the on the uh, sustainable development and sustainability. And as a third theme, we then then uh, dive more into the the welfare economics and consider how, for example, market failure. Might might result as environmental problems, and how then uh, market mechanisms could be could be used to to address those kind of issues. So thanks for your attention, and see you on the next video lesson.